If you're looking to build a gaming PC right now, but aren't quite sure where to start, I've got just the video for you. Because in this one, I'll be covering off the best builds you can assemble right now for a wide range of budgets. Whether you're looking to spend as little as $750 or as much as $2,000, this video is going to have you covered. As I'll be putting together four parts of this live, explaining the rationale behind each of the components and showing you guys just how I can figure my builds and decide exactly how much to spend on each component. Let's do this. As ever, I'm going to be using Newegg in today's video to give us the most up-to-date pricing. The date today is, let me check, the 14th of June, so prices can change and I'll leave affiliate links down below for all regions in the description. Now let's start, shall we, with a real budget-oriented build, a $750 to $800 system. And where do we start? Now I think the first thing to do is look at the graphics cards on the market right now that make the most sense. And the GPU market, without getting into too much detail is in a bit of a mess. Intel's ARC cards provide great value, but I can't recommend them to the vast majority of consumers just yet, as the drivers and optimizations are a little bit off. We've also got cards to consider, like AMD's new 7600, which provides a decent value proposition, but perhaps what's a better look is AMD's 6650 XT, at least initially at this price point. So let's take a look at which 6650 XT is the cheapest. There's one here for $254, that's pretty good. I don't think we're going to get much lower than that, so let's pop in the Sapphire Pulse design straight away. Got the graphics card. Case and power supply is always a good one to tick off. We know that the 6650 XT likes a 650 watt unit, so let's see what Newegg have got on offer at a decent price with that amount of wattage. There are cheaper ones like this Asus 650, which would probably be fine, but I don't want to sort of run too close to the wind on this, and I'd like something that's at least 80 plus bronze certified or higher. So let's see what there is available at this sort of region. There is this Corsair CX650M, which is a pretty reputable shout, maybe slightly on the pricey side, but we can go back and tweak that later. Case-wise, I'm a massive fan of Montec chassis on a budget, so let's have a look at what Montec have got available on the case region. Look at that, Montec Air 100, $54 with four included RGB fans. You aren't gonna get much cheaper than that. Pop that in, no problem. I'd always also add in elements like storage. You know roughly what kind of storage you want to achieve. So having these in, allows us to see what budget is left over for the other parts. I'd quite like to get a one terabyte NVMe drive, to be honest, in this system. So let's have a look at what the available options are. Now, you can see here, WD Black SN770 for just $50.99. Once again, that is really, really low. There are other Gen 3 options like this SN350 from WD would be fine, but for the extra $5, you might as well get something a bit better. Same with this silicon power drive. A good drive, a solid option for $39. But actually, when we look here, WD Black SN770. It's a Gen 4 drive with decent speeds. It's a bit more future-proofed and is only $50. So that is going right in my basket. Now, in terms of the running totals so far, we've got between $300 and $350 remaining to sit inside of that $750, $800 budget. GPU, power supply, SSD and case are all complete. Let's have a look at CPU. So initially, first couple of options that come to mind, 13400F is a very solid chip from Intel. $208 feels a little bit high if we've only got 350 left. AMD's Ryzen 7600, the non-X one, that's also worth considering. How much is one of those going for? See, that's going at the moment for 223, so the Intel option plainly a better bet. But could we actually look at something like the last generation 12400F? or in fact look at last generation's Ryzen 5 5600X, which would also work well. 12400F is going to give us 6 cores, 65 watt TDP for $150. Let's have a look at what the Ryzen 5600X is going to do by comparison. 5600X, basically the same price, lowest price in 30 days. That's actually a really difficult decision. Oh, um, I think we're going to go Ryzen. We'll go Ryzen. It's marginally cheaper. We get the included cooler, which is a little bit better than the Intel stock cooler. And we can use cheaper B550 and cheaper DDR4 memory. From the CPU, we then know we need a compatible motherboard. And on the AMD side, you've got the B chipset, which is the cheaper chipset, or the X chipset, which is far more pricey. We want to go B550, and we don't want to spend too much money here. But I'd like to try and include something in the build today with features 
features like Wi-Fi, like USB-C. Motherboards, you can cheap out a lot, but you don't want to go too far. In terms of the cheapest options, there is a board here for $101. It does make compromises in the sense that you're not going to have really any overclocking headroom for the CPU, but it's got Wi-Fi, as you can see here on the rear panel, but lacks USB-C. So I think that's a little bit too cheap. Let's try spending another 20 and see whether we get USB-C for our extra $20. No, we don't. This is harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, dun, 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 dun. Let's add on USB-C as a filter and see what the cheapest board available is with USB-C and we can perhaps save Wi-Fi for a bit later. Here we go. ASRock board. This is more like it. Uh, yes, USB-C and it's available with a Wi-Fi version for a little bit more. $104 though for this board. Perfectly good. We know of course that's going to be compatible with our Ryzen 5 CPU. Good reviews. We've had decent experiences with ASRock boards too. I also know that I need 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Of course, RAM is one of those core components we've got to have. And taking a look at some of the options, wow, there are some cheap RAM options out right now. Corsair, $39 for this DDR4 3200 megahertz kit. Good. 3600 would be better though. So let's have a look. 16 gig DDR4 3600 megahertz. See what survey says. The survey says 69. That's expensive. Here we go. $46 available in white or black. Adding that right in my basket as well. So we're aiming for a $750 budget. We're at $726 so far with all of the parts that we need for the build. So you can see here, $741. If you use the promo code, you're going to get another $15 off, taking us down to $726. Other options to upgrade this build would probably be an extra 16 gigabytes of RAM. So let's delete this memory and try and pop 32 gigabytes in. Regardless of how much you're spending, 32 gigabytes of RAM is becoming increasingly more important. Here we go. Bit of a boring kit for 69 or a slightly more interesting kit here for 69 same price so that's good pop that in and you can see here we're now coming in at a build budget of 747 dollars bang on the money i'll give you guys a little bit of a look of the parts list and of course we'll link all the parts for this build down in the description below now if you haven't watched one of these videos of how it works before i'm now going to transform this build and take it up to a 1000 dollar system using this as a base the first thing that i want to do with our extra 250 dollars is upgrade the graphics card in terms of the cards that compete here, the 4060 Ti would probably be NVIDIA's rival, but that's way overpriced, has VRAM problems galore, and is not what we want to recommend. And on the AMD side, the 7600 isn't really any better than the 6650 XT, or at least not to warrant the price jump. So let's have a look at the 6700, the non-XT variant, the base 6700 model. Let's sort by lowest price to highest price and see here. Wow! No way. There's one here, 279 on this XFX card. ASRock is next, 329, MSI 339. So I want to go for this one with free shipping, one that's obviously offered by Newegg and another $20 off. So really it's only 309. That takes us up then to a total price point so far of $812. So we've still got loads of legroom left to go, but there are areas of the build I think could probably do with a bit of an upgrade. The first is the power supply. Upgrading the GPU is always going to mean a slightly more beefy power supply. Supply, only another 100 watts or so. So let's see what the best 750 watt unit. Corsair again look pretty good. The CX750M, I like that power supply straight in the cart. That's only adding another, what, 10, 20 dollars. So we've still got 140 to play with, 150 to play with, in fact, which is where the most drastic change to this build is going to come in. I think the CPU, while amazing value, is probably a weak point. And taking out the CPU also means we're going to need some new DDR5 memory, and it means we're going to need a new motherboard that's compatible with the processor I would select. Now, the 13400F is a good shout, but I like the Ryzen 7600. I think it's a really solid CPU. Of course, AMD, you've got better overclocking support across the board. And here we go. Actually, they've got one here for 209. So let's add that into the cart. We will need a motherboard for this processor. So we want to go for something from the B. B? Yeah, the B. What's, it? What's, B? What's the motherboard called? B650. Of course it is. 100 more than B550. How could I possibly forget? B650 range of motherboards and you can see here there's still plenty of great value options we've got this ASRock one here with decent IO yep USB-C but no Wi-Fi pre-installed that's a shame spend a little bit more money though 159 that is a bargain MSI hello MSI B650 MA Wi-Fi does it have next gen USB-C because that is really really important to me oh MSI no but it has it on the front panel so if you're willing to make that sacrifice and go for a case with USB-C on the front panel we're going to be good to go. So we'll add that into the cart as well. Now, of course, we need some DDR5 memory, 32 
gigs, as I mentioned before, is just the minimum, really. And we'd like something with a decent latency. So the cheapest kit we can see here, 97. It looks a bit boring, though. How can we do with a bit more speed? Corsair Vengeance kit here, that looks fairly promising. 6,000 megahertz. Cast latency 36. That's ticking a lot of boxes. Pop that in the car and let's see where we are at. $1,000 is what we're trying to work towards. 978 US dollars. The only thing really I want to change in this build is the case. I'd like to go for something with a bit of USB-C. So let's have a look. USB-C PC case. Not normally the term I would go for, but I think that sort of ticks the boxes that we need. Hmm. What sort of options do we want to go for? I do like the NZXT H5 Flow. I mean, case is a super personal preference. You can learn, obviously, about all of our favorite cases over on geekawatt.com if you'd like to learn a little bit more. Here we go. H5 Flow in black for 93 or in white for 86. I'm absolutely going to add that into the cart. And let's have a look where we're at for our $1,000 build. Oh, I think you'll forgive me for being $12 over. And for an extra $200, $250, what have we gained? So we've got better motherboard with better connectivity, Wi-Fi as well, Ryzen 7600, which is leaps and bounds ahead of the 5600X, a more powerful 6700 XT graphics card, 750 watt power supply, and 32 gigs of DDR5 memory. This is a build that if you wanted to spend a bit more money, I'm going to show you super easily how you could add $200 on. This is a bonus build we weren't planning on doing. Bop the graphics card out. The rest of the build is ready. $500 to spend. Let's see what GPU we can get. One of the places I like to go for my graphics card related inquiries is just GPU. Now, this whole video looks like a new egg ad. They've not paid for this at all, unfortunately. Um, but their new site, Just GPU, is amazing. So good. It's like a big GPU database, basically. So we can sort by lowest price and then say, yeah, how much do we want to spend? I've got $500. So let's do $450 as the minimum. Whoa, hello, new egg. Now I don't want to spend $2,000. $450 as the minimum. And let's see what's available. So 3070, not a bad shout, but eight gigs of video memory. Avoid those kind of cards. We want something with 12, maybe more if we can. 4060 Ti, no, that's a waste of money. The 6750 XT is better. Oh, this is difficult. 6800, I mean, AMD are really putting themselves across as a, a good value option here. Let's see how much we have left. We've got just under $500. Oh, there's, there's me. No, which tab are we meant to be on? There we are. And let's see. I think it's going to have to be a 6800, really. That makes the most sense. So let's just have a quick check. Nothing else. 6800 XT for 530. So that's also worth considering. So let's have a look on Newegg. The prices should be pretty similar. See what 6800s they've got and what the lowest price one is that we might be able to pick up. Sapphire Pulse. Again, Sapphire winning recommendations in this video. Nice cooler, triple fan, decent form factor. Looks like a, what, two and a half slot design. Pretty normal. Pop that in. And there you can see very easily how we've managed to take a $1,000 build and turn it into a highly competitive $1,200 system that's actually $7.22 below budget. So $1,200 build, here you go. Now, how do we then take this to what wants to be a $1,500 build? What if you've got another $300 to spend? Now, I am going to stick with the Ryzen platform, but instead of the 7600, I'm going to pop it out and pop the 7600X in. Now, if you're going to be using this $1,500 build for more than gaming, I'd recommend something like a Ryzen 7 7700X or better, the i7 13700K. While I'm here, I also think we could do with a bit of a motherboard upgrade. I think a another $50 on a motherboard would be a good idea. So let's have a look at the AM5 motherboard options because we might be able to squeeze in an X670 series motherboard. And let's sort once again by price low to high. Now the cheapest one they've got, $85. We're not messing about with that. Let's have a look what there is for the $200 price tag, give or take. This gigabyte board is a really nice option for $190. What's the cheapest X670 board we can find? There is an ASRock board board for $229 here that actually looks quite good. It is also X670E, so that's going to give us PCI Gen 5. So let's see what damage that's done to the funds that we've got to play with. Still got $200 US to spend, meaning we can pop out the 6800 and see what graphics card is achievable for the price tag of $700. So let's pop over to my other favorite site, Just GPU. Tune the price point up to $700 US. Let's do $650-ish. $624 apparently is what we're going to do and see if we can grab ourselves a bargain. Wow! 
Now, 6950 XT, ASRock for $629. I mean, why you would buy a 4070 when you can buy that for six? I don't even know how AMD are making any money for 629. See, all you people over the years that have called me, oh, you're an NVIDIA fanboy. Not today. AMD, they're just on smoke. It's unbelievable. 6950 XT, pop that in. Let's see if we can find the same card. 629. And there's even options. 639, 629, 629. You've got so many choices. So let's pop in the ASRock card. Check it's in stock. What? Is it another $20 off? That cannot be right. Surely not. AMD. You unbelievable people. $609. What? I don't even know how that's possible. That's a 16 gigabyte 4K card. And we've, we've still got money left. I'm very aware my voice has gone very high pitched. I'm incredibly excited. Unbelievable. There are one or two problems with the build though. The graphics card is so good, we could probably do with a new power supply. So 850 watt power supply. And my neighbors might want us to move out after that whole tirade. 850 watt power supply. Hmm. Corsair 129. Uh, of course, there you're pulling me in today. EVGA 127. Oh, I'm having so much fun. I 80 plus gold. Yeah, let's go EVJ. EVJ makes sick power supplies. And after their whole GPU fiasco, I feel very sorry for them. And I've never had a problem with their power supplies. So if you're watching and you want to support the homies at EVJ, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Good power supplies. I also just need to pop in a fairly good value. I think 240 mil all in one to keep the 7600X cool. Couple of decent options on here by the looks of things. I'm kind of airing towards, not sure which yet. There's this deep cool one here for 87. I mean, price wise, it's cheaper than the Cooler Master one. 20 option and deep could do some great all in one so $87 add that to the car and that will keep as I say the 7600x nice and chilly the only thing about the build I might say could do with some improvement maybe we might need a slightly bigger case just to accommodate for the the larger graphics card but that's something that you'd be able to check let's be safe let's pop the case out for something I know will definitely fit and let's add into place a 4000d from Corsair love that case you can find our review of that online 4000d airflow or they've got the RGB for 150 that's going to push us over budget. So let's add the Corsair 4000, the airflow in black instead. Definitely enough room for the GPU. Built in that case loads of times. And that gives us a grand total of $1,472. You've got some money left for some RGB strips if you so desire. But what about if you got $2,000? The final build we're going to cover off in today's video. What would I change? And to be honest with you guys, I'd change quite a lot. I am actually going to go for the AMD platform again. Intel is a really solid choice, but the 7800X3D is a really compelling gaming CPU and if we can fit that into the budget that would be amazing. At $2,000 I will admit we aren't necessarily going for best bang for the buck across the whole board. If you just want gaming you probably can just get a Ryzen 7 or an i7 save $100 compared to this chip and be fine. But if you're spending that kind of money you've really got the opportunity to create a build that's quite well future proofed. I know that's not a word that we really should be using but I'm going to use it. Now let's have a look motherboard wise. We want to step the motherboard up but I don't want to blow all the money on a new CPU. CPU and motherboard and have no more graphics to show for it. So let's have a look. This ASRock Steel Legend board at 299 is really compelling. Even this ASRock Pro RS board is better than the other board we had. 279, very good deal. I don't want to go too cheap. Let's look at the... Let's go ASRock again. I mean, I can't... It's either this ASRock or that ASRock. So let's go for the cheaper one. You want to obviously look at VRM power phases and stuff in a bit more detail if you're really planning to go ham for $2,000. But here's what I do to begin with. SSD I would change out for a proper full fat gem 4 drive like the SN850 from WD that springs to mind as a really solid option SN850X even a terabyte $77 yes please pop that in and then that's going to leave us with a total of $1740 so it's another 260 ish to spend case I'm going to upgrade I think aesthetics are important at this price point forgive me if you don't agree RGB ATX case loads of options I think Newegg's search engine is really good though so that will bring us some decent ones. Lankle 2 Mesh, that's fair enough, okay. Lankle 216, I like the 216 from Lee and Lee, that's a really nice case. Hmm, but I think we can do better. What about the NZXT H7 RGB? That's a that's a really well built, not at that price. 200, I did not know that case was over $200. No way NZXT, I'm sorry. Maybe we're going to put this Lee and Lee case in. Let's go back to the search results we had before. I don't want to spaff loads of money up the wall on, you know, a case when we could get something that still looked nice. Lee and Lee, $109. Yeah, that's good. ARGB fans, good airflow. Some money left over for some more fans as well if you wanted it. Lovely stuff. And that brings us to a 
grand total of 1744. Let's remove the GPU, see how much money's left. Ah, CPU cooler. We need one of those, don't we? 7800X3D runs hot. It's going to have to be a 360 millimeter all in one cooler, but I don't want to spend $200 and I don't want you guys to spend $200. You do not need to spend that much money. With that being said, let's see this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Not even have to think about it. Deep cool LS720. Superb. And for $109, cannot go wrong. So $734. What can we get on just GPU for $734? We can get a 7900 XT for $799. That's quite compelling. So let's have a look, shall we? What the cheapest 7900 XT, not the XTX, the XT is. So let's pop that in. Price low to high. Oh, ASRock again. This is like an ASRock and AMD special, this video. Nice card, good cooler, good reviews, solid performance. I mean, you can't really go too far wrong. And we're only $27 over budget. So for $2,000 nowadays, you can get yourself an X670E motherboard with a top of the range, the best gaming CPU out there right now, the 7800X3D. You can bag yourself an ASRock 7900 XT, a beast of a card at 4K with a whopping 20 gigabytes of video memory. Take that, NVIDIA. 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM, DDR5 RAM, sorry. Top of the range, SN850X. Land cool RGB case, 360 mil all in one, and a nice EVGA Supernova 850, 80 plus gold power supply. That's the only other area I would double check in terms of wattage, maybe step up to a thousand. I know I'm pushing you guys a bit over budget, but at the moment we're only 1% over budget. You'll, you'll forgive me, right? Amazing, There's some really, really solid builds in there today. And it shows how far PC park pricing is coming down. So if you're looking for the best build to assemble in June and July, 2023, take a look at the parts link below. And if it's now, I don't know, August, 2025, get subscribed. I'm sure we'll have done a newer version of this video with more up-to-date information. If you enjoyed this one, make sure to get subscribed, drop a like, rate, and thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next video for more deals and cheap GPUs. Can't believe this video is just AMD. People are gonna say that I'm a Team Red fanboy.